Yes, I'm a clinical psychologist. I work mainly with uh, angry young people in my job with Eastern Health. Um, I've also done a lot of research working with angry uh, young boys in schools and I devised a program called Doing Angry Differently which was aimed at trying to help those boys stay at school despite how angry and aggressive they get at times. Well, for someone who's recurrently angry, the best technique I think is to reflect on your anger, investigate it, try and understand um, not your anger not just at face value but from where it comes to turn and find the source of one's anger because of all the emotion, anger is just about the most tricky and the most deceptive because while um, a boy's parents might think he's angry about the fact he broke up with his girlfriend, the boy thinks actually it's these parents' rules that he's, that he's uh, angry about. And so the question is to try and gradually peel back the layers and to try and find what it is that's really irking someone. That would be the best technique I've come across when it comes to anger. Um, when it starts destroying the opportunities, the relationships, the ability to reflect on one's own life, that that's when it's problematic. When I ring up Telstra or the RACV or any of those uh, um, big corporations and they give me all these choices, dial 1 for X and dial Y for Z, and my choice is never there. Sure, my name is Andrew Day. I'm a clinical and forensic psychologist, a professor of psychology at Deakin University in Victoria. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about the experience of anger, and particularly problematic anger, and how it relates to serious violent offending and aggression. I think anger becomes problematic when people experience it very intensely. So it's not about how frequently or how often people get angry, but the intensity of the experience. And it's often when people experience very intense anger that they act aggressively or violently. Uh, no, I don't, not at all. I think anger is a very normal and healthy emotion. It motivates us um, to solve problems, to achieve our goals and to overcome injustice in the world. Um, I get angry, at, um, I get morally outraged at some things, so things that are going on in the world that I don't approve of, so it's not a personal anger, but anger about kind of a more general anger about things that aren't right. My name is Tom Benson, I'm an academic at, in the School of Psychology at the University of New South Wales, and I'll be talking about uh, some of the experiments we've been doing. So the first one, uh, we'll, talk, we'll sort of show you what happens in the brain when people become angry. And then I'll talk about two little behavioral interventions that we've developed using knowledge about how the brain works to sort of help people control aggression. Yep, so I'm going to talk about one little area in specifically. There's many er regions, but one in, in particular seems particularly important. That's the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. No, definitely not. Um, it's, it's part of being human. and. Uh, um, it's part of our evolutionary past as well. So as, as, uh, as uh, Michael was saying, it motivates certain behaviors, some of which were adaptive and some were not. Yeah, when people can't control the behavior that it motivates, in particular aggression, so I think that's a common cause. Or when it lasts too long, there can be health problems involved then. Oh. Lots of things. <laughs> All the stupid crap that makes everyone else angry, I think. <laughs> uh, when I'm lecturing, for instance, uh, um, um, uh, mobile phones going off in the audience or, um, you know, drivers on the road, you know, these, these sorts of things. So, yeah. 